And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how to begin to implement um, a workflow that draws from the inspiration found in paper folding to develop a series of um, motifs as well as components and look at how we can begin to facilitate uh, the modeling of those components as arrays through grids of points, points which are grids of points which are modulated by attractors, um, as well as uh, grids of points which are um, on surfaces, for instance. So, when we're talking about um, paper folding, we're talking about quite a few um, different um, basic kind of components. The first one is fold lines. So the lines which indicate the axis of creasing or folding are referred to as fold lines. And you can see that there are two types, um, primary types of um, folds that you can have, a valley and a mountain. So the valley, you can see, um, is going to fold um, inward and the, uh, or be convex and the mountain will be folding outward or concave. Um, you'll see as well here that there is this kind of open circle to a dark dot which indicates when you have a fold line um, where you should fold a point to. So here these are all folding into the center um, that point to that point. These are the kind of drawing conventions um, that are used with when you're indicating um, what actions to perform um, on your folding motifs or folding motifs. And so you can see here, um, just that little fold line, um, what happens whenever the, um, the action of folding or creasing is actually performed. Uh, when you have multiple fold lines, you obviously will have multiple um, kind of axes, um, which will end, essentially end up producing a greater uh, range of, of kind of texture and effect on the surface that you're folding. And so when you see that simple design motif um, actually um, arrayed, uh, it's, it's quite a bit more complex visually, um, but the same underlying principles of what you do with that um, array of fold lines or crease lines is um, funda it's fundamentally the same. So you have some which will act as mountains um, and some which will act uh, as valleys. And so if we compare then um, what happens whenever you have a simple fold line versus um, a more complex kind of um, hierarchy of, of fold lines, um, you'll see here this diagonal fold line essentially will just end up producing um, of one axis, single axis um, crease. Now, when we look over here, we can see uh, the fold lines have two axes and therefore allows the component to um, take a different shape. And then when we have um, two different axes, or actually more than two axes, um, with both mountain as well as valley folds, um, you can see that the, the form uh, once again um, can change. And so when you see that simple motif arrayed, um, in this case as a chain, you can see that it becomes quite dynamic um, once the folding has occurred. Um, the surface remains dynamic and, and also in its uh, range of, of kind of configurations uh, because it has quite a lot of flexibility to it. All right, so when we take a look at that process in terms of working through um, a kind of design process, there are a couple of components. The first is um, how do you define what your design motif will be? Then how do you define what, um, whether or not it's a mountain or valley fold? From that motif, you can begin to identify um, how much each of these points would ultimately move, indicating the amount of change that occurs to the surface. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in Rhino. So with my layer manager open, 
I'm just going to bounce right over here and I'm going to create a rectangle. Now I'm using my ortho as well as my grid snap, so I also have planar on, um, which is really just about ensuring that I'm snapping um, to a grid. This is the boundary um, of my design motif. And if I were to create a new layer, for instance, and I'll call this my fold line, make a line from here to here, you can see that this is now indicating an axis for creasing. Now, if I right click on fold line, um, I can go over here to properties and I can change this to line type and update how that is displayed. I'm going to turn my grid off so that it's easier to see. So now this is displayed as a dash line. Ultimately coming off of the laser, um, this would be um, the way that the, the actual um, fold line would be rendered coming off the laser. So you'd have a perforated line which would uh, indicate the ability to fold in two directions. Now, if I want to have greater flexibility in terms of the folding, um, I would go ahead and just mirror this. So now you can see by adding in another right line here, um, we have now two axes of folding. Now, taking a look at the motif that we have here, we can see that ultimately um, what we want to do is increase the amount of folding axes so that we can ultimately increase the amount of flexibility that the folded design will have. So I'm going to create another layer. And this one is going to be fold line O2, largely because we haven't yet indicated whether or not um, one is a mountain and one is a valley yet. So I'm just going to come right over here and click and right over here and click. Now if you remember, we can set the properties and change the line type. And we'll see here that we now have a series of folds indicating, um, a series of fold lines indicating the various axes where the folding may occur. Now, this is um, great, but in order to be able to go from this motif to something which has three-dimensionality, we actually need to model this now as a uh, component. Now, to be able to do that, there are a lot of types of uh, ways you could do it, but what we like to do is model using meshes, uh, largely because the mesh is very lightweight, which will allow us to um, have multiple meshes, many meshes, um, and it not becoming very heavy in our file. So I'm going to create a layer called 3D component. Now, in top view, I'm going to use the mesh command 3D face. Now, 3D face um, will allow us to click snapping to our um, our lines to draw single mesh faces. In this case, this is a triangle. So that would be for mesh 3D face. And with that triangle drawn, I could draw another, for instance. And as I'm drawing these faces, you'll see that I'm always modeling um, counterclockwise. And I could use something simple like array polar. to fill in the remaining units. 